It's Saturday, November 7th. It's 9.55 p.m. There's a lot of ambient noise around me, and I don't know how well this is going to pick up, but I'm going to just document something that happened to me earlier tonight. Probably around 6 p.m. I was walking home from this place, QFC, where I had gone to buy some food. I was going over in my head all of this, my medical history, like I could tell my life story using medical history as a central point because I've just had so much, um, you know, unfortunately I've had to spend so much time dealing with doctors and hospitals due to this torture that I've, you know, and what I now realize is torture that I've been put through my whole life. Um, so I was kind of going over the past 20 years in my head, especially after I'd come to Portland, because the stuff that I'd experienced, I realized it actually became worse and worse after I had moved to Portland. And there's a whole history with that, too, if, in terms of me trying to get somewhere in my life and the different times that I really, really, really tried to climb up and better myself and get somewhere in my life and the kinds of things that have been have done to me in order to prevent me from getting anywhere in my life, the retaliations. Anyway, so thinking about that a lot, how could I present this in such a way that I don't end up on going off on all these, you know, too many tangents that I can actually start to make some points um, or make it relevant to my current experience and, you know, the current conundrum, which is really an ongoing conundrum, it's just the closer I come to either to solving any particular problem, the more backlash I experienced. So that's what I was thinking about while I was walking back from QFC here. Um, so I was walking towards 60th on East Burnside Street right here. I came to one particular house and it was right next to this place called it was a tavern Okay, so where is QFC? It's QFC. I'm walking towards 60th. QFC is here. So I think it was right around here. Let's see. This is QFC. It was further down than this. So there's a bar in this location. The bar is called The Element and it's got these red lights. So I think it's up here. I was just approaching the Element Lounge. Here's the Element Lounge. I was in front of this building right here walking this way and probably right at this spot, right here, the name Trayvon Martin came to me. I'm thinking about something completely different, okay? And the name Trayvon Martin came to me suddenly into my head out of nowhere. Completely unrelated to anything that I was thinking about at the time. So I'm just going back over my history and looking at this. I've been over this region before, but I'm going to... Trayvon Martin was 2012. Here's 2012. This place was called the Copper Rooster in 2012. I remember that now. And then this is what this place looked ne like next door in 2012. This became several different businesses. It, right now, so let's, let's see what it is. Right now, this is a brewery called Lakeham. I think it's called Lakeham Brewery. This might be something. So when I was walking to the store, I actually noticed something going on here, which is this Jamaican food cart here. And I looked at the menu of this Jamaican food cart. Before it was Lake and Brewery, it was a um, it was a Thai noodle house called Tie Me Up. And I went in there. I had gotten food from there a couple times. I went in there once. There was cockroach on the wall right in front of me. It made me think that something was going on with that, that maybe that cockroach was a, you know, was a mind control kind of thing. Um, 
I see a truck here in this driveway. So this Jamaican food cart, I looked at it for a minute. I looked at the menu and I saw that the types of things that they were serving would be the types of food that an implant could potentially hide in. And I realized I would never buy food from this place. Um, so that's what I noticed headed down to the store, that there was a Jamaican food cart here and they were serving types of food that implants could be hidden in. Walking back, I'm thinking about medical stuff, medical implants, and when I when I walk past this location, I get the name Trayvon Martin in my head. So I made note of it. I took some photographs just to you know help me remember that that had happened, and I continued walking. So I walked up this way. I'm just going to point out here. Oh, well, how did I end up over here? That was kind of an accident. Look, there's a bunch of colors painted here. So this means something. People, I think what this means when you see weird, oversaturated, spotty colors, it means there's someone linked with this location who's distorting reality, painting it, right? These different colors that are resulting in, you know, and it's linking it, I think, also to this idea of spots and people being their lives being taken or being profoundly affected because of these lies that are being told when I, when I say color lies. So, and then this is the food cart that did sneak an implant into my food already. Okay, so I continued walking up this way. Photos from 2019. And then, roofing done on this house, home in 2019. Well, where did I turn? I might have, this is 61st. I'm, mm, I don't remember where I turned, but anyway, I'm going to go so I don't know that I walked along this way but I'm trying to get to the other point because I continued thinking I went back to thinking about what I had been thinking about so I probably walked this way and then turned up here um, but then Tra the name Trayvon Martin came to me again and this time when it came to me I was right in front of this house right here with a little library this house seems to have a lot going on we look at it over the years. This is 2011. So you can see what kind of cars are showing, the garden and so forth. This is 2009. The car's wheels are smeared. It's an older car. White picket fence. Okay, 2011. 2014. Two thousand fifteen, two thousand sixteen. Now the little library is there. Two thousand seventeen. There's more cars and more motorcycles. But it seems like it's probably the same residence, same type of garden. And everything. So this is what we looked like in two thousand nineteen. So I don't know. Was it this house specifically? It could have been something over here because this also seems to have gone through a bunch of changes. This is, um, let's go back to 2011. This is 2011. Looks like there's a brand new fence here. Is it brand new? Let's look at 2009 and see. Yes, it was brand new. So it was built between 2009 and 2011. Um, 2014. More work is being done. 2015. I said Trayvon Martin was 2012. I'm not sure that's correct. Let me just make sure. Two thousand twelve, that is correct. Okay, so Two thousand seventeen, 
2019, there was a whole bunch of building materials over here. You know, usually when you see a porta potty, it means there's renovation being done inside. I believe, I think that's what, and I see that quite a bit. So, I don't know. This was a random, it felt like a random click, and I ended up here at a new fence. 2019, I'm 62nd Avenue. Sometimes I think these random clicks are not as random as they seem. So this is 2016. This is 2019. So a lot of this kind of thing going on. New fences happening over the past few years. 2014. 2009 2011 2014 16 I see a black spot here broken wires Two thousand nineteen. So Trayvon Martin. So the thing about Trayvon Martin is if this is a twin linked mind control event, then I should see some type of similarities to something linked to my family or to Chris's family. Usually there's something that I see. And there's stuff. The guy named Zimmerman. Zimmerman's a name in my family tree, my father's side. George, the name George is meaningful, the name Michael is meaningful. Um, the fact that it was a Uh, retreat at Twin Lakes, the idea of Twin Lakes. So that possibly it could be a link to Lakeham Brewery. This Lakeham Brewing Company, I believe, is directly linked to the trafficking around me. Uh, why do I think this? Lots of reasons. It has to do with looking. I've looked at their website. I've, Ever since they appeared, I was looking at them pretty carefully because they appeared right after the B.O.B. song called Elephant, in which he says at some point, Assalamu alaikum. And then all of a sudden I thought, you know, why is he saying that? And then immediately this place shows up. And there were other things about that elephant video that made me think that this part, well, I could say what some of those things were. Okay, so let's go back to this map. Let's take a little trip back to where I was. So there's the QFC again. So it's right around here. Okay, so right around here. Here we are. This is June 2019. This right here used to be a 7-Eleven. Uh, at some point, probably in 2019, let's see, let's go, this is September 2019, this is June 2019. I had a dream about an elephant where I couldn't tell what was the front side or the back side of the elephant. And then shortly after having that dream, I took a walk down this direction and I saw all of a sudden this new graffiti on the old 7-Eleven, which allegedly was closed due to a fire in late 2018. And what do I see here? It could be an elephant-like looking thing. Like this could be an elephant's head with a trunk, and this could be the elephant's tail. But what's this here? Is this the back of an elephant or the front of an elephant, or is it something else entirely? I mean, obviously it looks like the name Dale, but there's some weird animal-like 
This looks like it could be an elephant's tail. This looks like I'm not sure what. This looks like it could be an elephant's head. So I thought, okay, well, that's why I had this dream about an elephant and who, what's the front or the back of the elephant, that question. You know, then I find that there's a B.O.B. video called Elephant in which he says the word assalamu alaikum. This whole area is now, this has been now torn down. This whole parking lot was gutted. It turned into a giant vacant lot, and it's now being, something else is being built up here right now. Um, this place here called Donut Queen Bakery and Pizza. Oops. This is all brand new. This is a new fancy. Okay, but this place called Donut Queen, wherever that is now, I just lost it. It's up here. Um, they've got a new sign. They, they seem to have done some renovation just last few months. Okay, and so then there was this place down here, which was the Noodle House, and then became Lake and Brewery about the same time, as you can see, that the elephant showed up. So, Asalaamu Alaikum, elephant in the front, no room, truck in the back. What the heck is going on? Wasn't there even a truck? There's a truck right here. Um, so, therefore, I was interested in this Lakeham beer, who are they, what did their website say, things like that. And a lot of these businesses come up saying things like, you know, oh, we just got together and decided let's open a brewery in Portland, and that's what we did, you know. And so somehow people are able to finance things like this. Um... So, Lakeham, Grateful Red. <sighs> so, retweet at tw Twin Lakes. So, it makes me wonder, there's the idea of the twins, the idea of lakes, Twin Lakes. There might be more to this. There's this idea of Sanford, Florida. My, I don't know if Sanford, Stanford, my parents, my family going to Stanford. I don't know because it's not exactly the same. If that's a link. A gated community. Link to uh, 18 miles northeast of downtown Orlando. So it was a newly built community in Florida. So... In fact, this community itself may actually be something significant. Two hundred and sixty three two story townhouses, that's a big housing development. Um back to the song Elephant. There's more than a casual nod to the White Stripes Elephant album. I spent some time really looking at um, some of the stuff in this. So there's the, you know, by the way, this elephant, it has zebra stripes. I'll find the elephant again. The elephant has zebra stripes, but if you look at, this is the cover, I think, for the single too. If you look at the elephant's eye, it looks like a mouse or a rabbit eye. So it's an interesting looking elephant, but the color is the white, red, and black linked to the White Stripes album called Elephant. I'm not sure why he's evoking the White Stripes album here exactly. But <laughs> I'm sure all of this stuff like what he's got written on his hat and his jacket and all of this is meaningful in some way. I don't know what the meaning is. But I got 
real interested in this scene here where he's sitting on a Mercedes in this parking lot where all these cars are kind of boxed in with these balloons wearing this green jacket with this cotton candy and so forth. Well, this cotton candy, I guess, is a different, a slightly different scene, but um, this one is balloons. And I thought about how much this looked like the parking lot at the edge field, um, which is a venue in Portland linked to McMenamin's. And he's sitting on a Mercedes. So he looks like he's waiting for something. He's wearing Nikes, yellow and orange Nikes. This green jacket, red shirt, faded blue jeans, the hole in the knees. Um, so to me, this looks like the Edgefield parking lot. It looks like a few other locations, but the Edgefield parking lot is really what what I really felt like this looked like. So I ended up going online and doing like a Google Street View and looking around the Edgefield parking lot. And I saw some interesting things there. And... Um, I looked into the history of the Edgefield, history of McMenamin's, all this kind of stuff, and I, I definitely felt like there was something to this, and that in part this is supposed to evoke that. So I had a dream last night, and I didn't really go anywhere with that because I didn't really know, well, is it how, why is the Edgefield significant, and what way is the Edgefield significant? What does that mean? I didn't have any answers to that, but I did have a dream last night about the Edgefield. So I find it interesting, since I had linked this video, this location in the video to the idea of the Edgefield parking lot, I find it interesting that I would then be walking home from QFC, be passing by this location here, across from the Lakeham Brewery, and, you know, approaching the 7-Eleven, and, you know, approaching this Element Lounge, right here. The name Trayvon Martin comes to me. And then it comes to me again a little further up. So I did want to show that this is a Providence, it's called Providence House, I'm not sure what it is exactly, but that this is also a new, right? No, it's not as new. I thought it was new. It's just re repainted. <laughs> So um, what I'm wondering is, is there a link? First of all, Trayvon Martin appears to have been, okay, so what's going on? How is it that black lives are being used or connected to businesses in Portland? And I mean black lives that are taken either by other police officers or by other people. How is it that, how is it that, Black lives being taken is related to development in Portland. Exactly. How does that work? Even the name Edgefield is interesting. I kind of feel like I should maybe come back to Edgefield at another time because I feel like I could end up spending some time on this, but this is what I'm talking about, just to show what I'm talking about. So the Edgefield, um, and McMenamin's is kind of a unique thing we have around Portland in which Historic properties are often open and then repurposed into venues. And in the case of the Edgefield, it's a type of venue that has a lot of different, kind of a multi-purpose venue. So I've been to a wedding there. I've been to a Willie Nelson concert there. Built in 1911 as the county poor farm. And there's also it's also associated with... A, um, mental health hospital like a I think and maybe even 
a jail. I'm not certain. I'm a little confused about all this stuff, but um, they've they've kind of de-emphasized some of that stuff. And I'll show the parking lot since I mentioned the parking lot, just to show what I mean. It's not really in Portland. It's just outside of Portland, I think. Okay, so here's Vietnam Veterans Memorial Highway again. Um, McManaman's Edgefield. So let's look at the... So looks like this, so the concert venue is probably... Well, where is it? <laughs> Just you can kind of see. So here's Halsey Street. Here says Ruby Spa Edgefield. There's something here. There's parking lot here, but I'm talking about a big grassy parking lot, like where we parked when we saw Willie Nelson perform. It might be more like this. So let's see. So here's a parking lot at Edgefield. This is more like it. So this is so, sort of, it looks like I can't really, can I scoot around here a little bit? It looks like I can, not too much. This is sort of like where we parked when we saw Willie Nelson. So it's this kind of thing, this type of parking lot, big open grassy space where the cars kind of are all boxed in together. <laughs> 